Welcome to Read Your Comics. Today, I'm looking at Deathmate Prologue. Okay, this is another one of the top-selling comics of 1993, and this one lands at number 10. Number 10. Um, it was a big deal. You know, Image and Valiant were the two big, like, upstarts. They were definitely taking a big chunk of market share away from Marvel and DC, so they needed to do a crossover. Their universes needed to collide, and it was built up and built up and built up. Wizard Magazine built it up. It was in house ads and both um, Image and Valiant books, you know, for months and months and months, and it finally, finally landed. Um, it has a September cover date and a two ninety five cover price, which was quite high for 1993 pretty cool you know we got a jim lee cover here inked by bob layton with our image characters um well i guess they're mixed up i thought it was one side and one side but um we have our two kind of like uh energy i would say dr manhattan type powered characters from the two universes solar man of the atom and void from wildcats i mean it's a pretty it's a pretty interesting shot right there right but before I even jump into the book, I want to give a shout out to West Coast Avengers. Um, if you're not familiar with him, he holds live sales every Wednesday on Sundays. He drops new cool comic content of, you know, sifting through collections or just discussing books. We do book clubs together on occasion, and he's even appeared on my channel before. I've got all his information down in the, down in the uh, description, so be sure to look there and and hit Dave up if you're not already familiar with Dave. Anyway, Dave had I bought something from Dave, and in the in in the package, he just happened to throw in this pack of Deathmate cards, <laughs> and he had no idea I was going to do this book. But when I saw it, I was like, "All right, I've got to push the, redoing the book up, and I'll just go ahead and open this pack of cards when I do the book." So here we go. We're ripping open a pack of cards from 1993 what did i get did i get an awesome chase card i don't even know what cards came in this um okay it's a, a robot <laughs> being blown up this is a more valiant -y card you got harada from harbinger and i guess this is jeff the geomancer Oh, we've got Solar and Supreme in the card right there. Number 104. How big was this set? This looks like the Harbinger character, and I don't know who that is. But I see a, I see an image guy down there. I see an image uh, cable clone down there. And this one has a little hologram on it. I don't know what that means. It's card number 16. They, oh, they all have that hologram on it. So, I don't see any chase cards in here, but... Well, some of them are stuck together. Man, you get a lot of cards in this. Ah, there we go. So that's Jeff the Geomancer. And, uh, that looks like Barry Windsor Smith drawing that. It looks like Archer and Armstrong, or Archer and Ivar. Ah. You got Zealot as part of the hardcore. Look at her leg. It's all shot up. Uh, that's, so that is Barry Windsor Smith right there, and that's from this book. And then you've got John Prophet fighting the... Uh, Erica Pierce from the Unity Saga. All right, pretty neat. Got some cool cards there, right? Anyway, let's jump into the book. It starts out with Barry Windsor Smith art. That's a good way to start. Um, you got Bob Layton as the writer, Barry Windsor Smith on pencils, and Jim Lee as the inker. I mean, if you're going to do a big event and get the top two artists from the two companies. Barry Windsor Smith was doing quite a bit for Valiant. Um, and of course, Jim Lee, I mean, they were all big artists at Image, right? That was their thing. But Jim Lee, probably the biggest, I would say, <clears throat> 
for notoriety and reputation. And it's worth noting that this is really, this isn't the full image because Spawn, Savage Dragon, Shadowhawk, they're not in this. The Max is not in this. The Pit's not in this. It's really like Valiant crossing over with the Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld, and uh, Mark Silvestri stuff. Anyway, so Solar, this is his girlfriend from the Solar title, and it's in the year, it starts out, what does it say, 2062. So she's still looking young here in 2062, and as it turns out, it's because Solar has been keeping her youthful and alive, and she's like, I can't do it anymore. Everybody else has grown old and died, and you know, you're using this unnatural way of keeping me alive, and I love you, but I've got to go. Like, you've got to let me go. So he does. He, like, removes his energy from her and lets her go. Uh, and you really look at these pages, you definitely see the Barry Windsor Smith because he's the main penciler. And it's interesting to look at the inking of Jim Lee on it because Jim Lee and his longtime inker, Scott Williams, definitely had this, like, these little lines right here. That was kind of their thing. But Barry Windsor Smith is a lot more detailed than just doing like little teeny lines like that. So it's interesting to get that kind of a, a take over Barry Windsor Smith's pencils. So as soon as he lets, as soon as he lets uh, his girlfriend or his wife, maybe they were married, lets her go ahead and, and pass away. He has this schizoid problem where he kind of splits off into two. And that was something I think that happened a couple times in the main that was something that happened a couple times in the that was something that happened a couple of times in the solar series proper and i always love solar's design it's, it's almost like a flash costume but like with a cyclops visor this is kind of strange though with the jack with no skull cap and and the jacket and like the weird visor that kind of cuts off with like little wings right there anyway and it's like he splits off and becomes this and goes into like he's going to look for creation and along the way he meets void and they're meeting in this like kind of like in between universe area where their powers are their powers and their minds are melting melding and they're you know falling for each other like instantly because there's they're so connected and you have like this melding too of like solar's powers and her powers like if you'll notice like here solar's powers were usually represented like this straight lines as if you were like shining a light through a prism and you saw like the beams of light kind of intersecting across and that's always how they did his powers but void her powers are more like wavy and like you know kind of i guess you'd say almost like traditional energy they're obviously not like kirby energy but like stuff's coming off over like that more fluid like and not rays of light but as you see they're like becoming enmeshed solar's power is kind of it's like their power is kind of amalgamizing together and so they're trying to figure out what they each are and they're quickly, they're like drawn to each other. And as they, you know, unite, <laughs> they, you know, they kiss and they kind of become one together. And that's an interesting panel right there where they're like blending together. Their eyes are meeting up. And then there's like a big bang naturally like these i guess like opposites attract and causing something crazy to happen and that's the end of chapter one and i was like dang 295 and that's all you get is like 10 pages <laughs> that's a bit much because then we go into it and we just get house ads we get well there's the deathmate red ad uh house ad for a valiant book more valiant house ads more Valiant House ads. Wildcats trading card set. All right, now we get a, we get a little bit more. And now we get Rob Liefeld. So we still got Bob Layton as the writer. 
Rob Liefeld as the penciler, and then we're going to get Bob Layton with Danny Mickey, Dan Panosian as inkers on these next few pages. And there's not really much going on in these pages. It just kind of shows how the two universes combine. And it's not like groups from each other, like they met each group. It's like they were like, they combined it in a, in a way that like the characters were just always existing together and that they were part of each other's teams. So you get Bloodshot, you got Youngblood, but in the middle, they're pushed together, and Bloodshot is part of Youngblood. You've got Shadow Man, you've got Wildcats, push them together, and there they are together. And so forth. Wildcats and Hardcore. Is it hard, Hardcore Wildcats? Wildcore Hardcats. <laughs> Pretty original, right? Harbinger, and I guess this is Brigade. I only recognize it because I did that video and I saw the the Brigade character that had like the Batman, the metal Batman helmet. And this is, Liefeld didn't know what he was doing with these characters. He doesn't have them in their costumes right there. This Torque guy, he was a big dude, but he wasn't that big. He's like eight feet tall right there. Anyway, and I think he was dead at this point too. Anyway, and then getting bigger, nicer splash page here. I, I think this is supposed to be Turok. Because you got Turok, you've got kind of an imagized Exo Man of War, and there was Cyber Force. Um, I mean, I see Wildcats and Youngblood characters meshed up here. I don't really see any Valiant. Maybe that's a Valiant character, and that's a Valiant character. And then you've got Solar and Supreme. Supreme with a, with a chin beard. And a little bit of Wolverine here happening. Um, this is Geomancer from Valiant, who was kind of like uh, connected to the earth and the nature, and he could kind of see the future. I mean, he'd get like visions of the future. And there was always a Geomancer, like every generation would have a Geomancer. And this was the 1990s Geomancer. Anyway, he wakes up from a nightmare where he was like dreaming all this stuff going on or thought he was dreaming it, but he wakes up and no, he wasn't dreaming it. it. It was all different. It is all like mashed together and it's wrong. And then these guys show up and I have no idea who these guys are. None of them look familiar to me. They're called the Berserkers. I don't recognize them from Image or Valiant, <laughs> but I recognize this guy. This is Prophet, John Prophet. And I guess... Maybe his powers were similar because him and the Geomancer, Jeff the Geomancer, he, he comes to save him. He's like, I see the world is wrong too, and we need to work together. First, let's, you know, fight these guys. And then they take off to go see what's going on. So it's like, continued in Deathmate Yellow, Red, Blue, and Black on sale soon. On sale soon. What does that mean? <laughs> And that was a problem with, that was one of the big problems with this crossover is the Valiant stuff was done and ready to come out when this came out. And it probably came out within the same month. And the image stuff, the two image books, which were red and black, eh, those took a little while to come out. Um, and then it goes into house ads again for image stuff this time. Brigade Zero. So here's Deathmate Black, and Deathmate Black is actually kind of considered somewhat of a key book because it is the first appearance of Gen 13. Um, I mean, Gen 13 is not really being used for anything these days, but people still look to it. And anyway, you can see all the different talent that was going to work on that book. And then on the back, it kind of tells you what's going on in the, the yellow and blue. These are the, the two valiant ones that they put out. So... It tells you who all's in it. You've got Ivar and Armstrong, uh, Ninjack and Zealot, Hard Cats, Shadow Man, Grifter, Master Dark, Doctor Eclipse in the yellow, and in the blue, Magnus and Battlestone, Livewire, Stronghold, Striker, Impact, Harbinger Brigade, and Solar Supreme are in the blue, the Deathmate blue. I got these when they came out because when these came out, I was all in on image. I was pretty much all in on Valiant too. Um, 
and I remember getting these and as they trickled out, it's like, this one actually is kind of intriguing. You're like, Ooh, what are they going to do? They've like meshed them together. It might be kind of neat. And the rest of it is pretty terrible. And I don't remember if the, this is the prologue and there is an epilogue issue that I guess wraps it up and I could not tell you what happens in it. I just know those four color books are more like they're not telling a, a linear story through the issues. They're just kind of like, Oh, here's a story of the characters mashed together. Here's a story of the characters, ma another way these characters are mashed together, but they're not working toward, uh, you know, separating the universes or anything of that nature. So I think this was, this was a cash grab is, is the best way to describe the death mate crossover. And I think Valiant probably wanted to make it a cohesive story <laughs> and the image guys were too busy doing their other stuff probably to give it that kind of attention. So if you run across these and you're interested in it, they're kind of neat to look through, but not really a cohesive story. Until next time, read your comics.